Mayor Robert Sullivan. Uh, this is actually the 27th episode of Our Brockton. Uh, I want to thank BCA for uh, helping us uh, do this programming on a regular basis. And I've had some wonderful guests uh, during the, the previous 26 episodes. And today, it's really my honor and privilege to have Hillary Dubois on. Uh, Hillary, thank you so much for being on the show. The title is called Our Brockton. It's about our community, our city. Uh, we're better together. So um, for those that don't know you, you've been around a long time. You've helped so many, many factors in the community, but do you mind just telling the viewers uh, who you are and, and what, what capacity you do here in the City of Champions? Sure. Um, so I feel like I'm an adopted Brocktonian, um, and I have been working in the city, which I love very much for the past um, over 11 years. Um, and what I have been working on has been sort of a transition, um, but still in the substance use prevention arena. Um, so when I first started in 2010, I was doing overdose um, prevention around opioids. And at the time, it was very taboo. It was something that we didn't talk about. A lot of people weren't comfortable or familiar with it. And um, since then, uh, Brockton has really embraced at all different levels throughout the community the devastating impact that opioids have had on on all of our communities. And um, we have integrated educational opportunity, resources, um, you know, safe spaces for people to have conversations around uh, hard topics all throughout the community. Everything from working with the school nurses so that they would have this resource and education. Um, about 2014, we worked with Brockton Public Schools um, Health and uh, Wellness Education Department, and we helped to entirely redo the curriculum to make sure that it made sense, it was up to date, it was current. Um, we've done a lot of events with um, the arts and worked with the Fuller Craft Museum. We have had our uh, photo voice projects where we've worked with local youth to engage them in a photography project. Um, we've had the opportunity to work with so many individuals and over these past more than a decade, we've been able to go from um, talking about opioid overdoses and, and naloxone and Narcan and all that, which seemed very taboo, to have it integrated throughout the city. And then from there, we actually kind of went backwards in a lot of ways and started talking about um, alcohol prevention with youth, marijuana prevention with youth, nicotine prevention with youth. Uh, we also do a project around um, the prevention of problem gambling with youth. Um, mm -hmm. So we really do the whole arena around substance use prevention. And we always try to look at, like you said, our Brockton, we try to look at our community and see how substance use impacts the whole community. So not just teenagers or not just people in their 20s, how it impacts everyone, and then trying to find a common language to be able to communicate the work that we're doing with the audience so that they can receive it. Um, and it's been so exciting to see the changes over this past decade, to be embraced, um, and to continue to just have opportunities to do more. Because as a group, we always ask, what's next? Mm -hmm. And in the City of Champions, there's always someone who's willing to champion what comes next and work with us. And, and it's been just such a wonderful, exciting process. Yeah, and you're, and you're definitely a champion within our City of Champions. There's no doubt about that. And I think you hit it on the head. I mean, in the past, it was it was taboo, right? It was not not something that should be widely spoken about. And, and the barriers, thankfully, have been broken down. And, uh, you know, you just... You just uh, really give a good synopsis of, of all encompassing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's wrapping all different components from nicotine to gambling, to alcohol, to drugs, opioids, everything. Um, you know, what, what have you seen in your professional experience because of COVID-19, right? COVID's changed everything, mental health and financial health and everything, but, but, but the, the tsunami known as the opioid addiction and, and so many loss of lives have not stopped during COVID-19. So how has COVID really hurt your efforts? Mary, that's a great question. Um, the, the problem is that it, it becomes a second priority, which makes sense. But um, what has happened is in our, our arena, we have um, a shortage of beds 
right? Treatment beds get taken offline because there's a need for medical staff elsewhere. We're not a high priority in terms of treatment for PPE, even though we have to continue to be able to serve our, our folks in the community. Um, so mental health and substance use usually within the realm of, of medicine is sort of a, a second class citizen in a lot of aspects. So we've really had to go out on the limb to try to make sure we continue to have access to beds while maintaining social distancing. Um, another unforeseen uh, complication of uh, COVID has been um, to the recovery community. Mm. So the recovery community has really, really been hit hard over the past 18 months. And we've unfortunately seen our brothers and sisters who've been in, in a lot of cases, long-term recovery of three, four, five, six, seven years, who basically their recovery has had a foundation that's based in community and has had a foundation based in accountability. And so mm. isolation for, for those individuals is, has such a far reaching negative impact in their ability to sustain and maintain their sobriety. So unfortunately within the opioid epidemic, we've lost a lot of folks who've been in long-term recovery and, and that's just devastating. Yeah. Um, and, and then we also look at folks who, like you said, it's a far reaching um, impact uh, on, on individuals who've lost jobs, um, you know, and it's a lot easier when you look at fear and anxiety and stress, it's a lot easier for any one of us to try and find comfort in a mind altering substance, whether that's alcohol or, or, or heroin. We, we right. To an easy access to alleviate that feeling of just really intense panic that I think a lot of us have felt at some point over the course of the, the past 18 months, you know, or if we've lost someone. Um, I lost my grandmother to the pandemic early on. And because of when it happened, it took us over a year to be able to have a memorial service for her. So it's suspended grief, right? Which is yes. not something I think any of us have ever really experienced before. So it's this, this building on top of, of someone who is struggling, um, it's gonna make it a lot easier for, for those individuals to look for support uh, through, through mind altering substances. And we see that when we look at our alcohol sales, yep. we've seen um, individuals who have uh, maybe traditionally been non-drinkers, drinking. We've seen people who are moderate drinkers becoming heavier drinkers throughout the mm -hmm. pandemic. And then there's also, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic, folks who have legitimate pain concerns, who have legitimate injuries, who were waiting to have a knee transplant or, or you know, or, or something serious medical. Um, you know, they couldn't do physical therapy. They couldn't do any of these alternative options. And so the only way to treat it was to continue to write prescription pain medications. Um, uh, that we know ha can have challenging outcomes. So, yeah, no, I mean, you 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 did you really just kind of again reiterated um, the ravages of COVID, right, and how it impacts people mentally and physically, and heightens um, certain issues in, in 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 human beings, right? I mean, that's what we've really seen. Um, I guess a question I'd have for you, Hillary, if if somebody is watching this and either they're or they are sober right now and they're being challenged uh, on their sobriety or or they're looking for help how can people reach out to you sure um so we are on uh, social medias um so on facebook with the brockton area prevention collaborative um, as well as the brockton mayor's opioid overdose prevention Co um, coalition on Instagram, we are at od underscore preventionist. And uh, really what we like to be is a, a resource for folks in the community. So yes, yeah, certainly we do overdose prevention education and we, we work with anyone, but if someone's just looking for a connection or uh, knows someone who's struggling and doesn't even know where to start and Google seems really overwhelming, we want to encourage them to reach out to us. And we might not have all of the answers, but we know the folks locally to connect to. And that runs the gamut. So if someone is is has a gambling addiction problem, it, it doesn't it doesn't just have to be drugs or alcohol, right? It, it runs the gamut. 
Absolutely, yes. Okay. We would know the right people to get in touch with. Um, if it's uh, loved ones who are struggling, who don't know what resources are, we can put them in contact and um, be that warm handoff that I think people really look for um, so that they're not just like given a phone number and sent on their way. Yeah, no, and I, I think that the, the compassionate approach that you do and your, your, your colleagues do, it makes a difference. People understand that, they appreciate that, they welcome that, you know, you embrace them, um, which is, is really just uh, a wonderful thing to do in the community and not just Brockton. I mean, it runs, runs neighboring communities as well. So, um, you know, I just want to thank you for what you do on a daily basis. I really do. I also want to thank you for coming on the show uh, because the information that we give, even though the show is relatively quick, we get wonderful responses, uh, educating, informing people, and then to be effective listeners, I mean, to be effective leaders, we have to be good listeners, right? So um, I just, I want to thank you uh, personally as a mayor, but as a, a dad of three kids and, and as a Brocktonian, kudos to you and what you do. And um, again, as long as I'm mayor, I'm here to, to partner with you, collaborate with you and continue to work with you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your leadership and your willingness to, to be a partner with us. Thank you so much, Hillary. So you have just seen um, the 27th episode of our Brock, and my uh, esteemed guest was Hillary Dubois. And again, if you have any comments or questions or you need to reach out to Hillary or myself, you can always call the mayor's office at 508-580-7123. Uh, and again, we're always here for you in your time of need or if you just need to talk to anybody. So again, thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Brockton Community Access. And uh, I'll be back for the 20, 28th episode of our Brockton uh, within the week. Be well, stay safe, and continue to be diligent on the uh, ravages of COVID-19.